Hi everyone, I'm Dylan Welch. In our first episode of Out of the Shadows, we traveled down to Indiana State and went all access with head coach James Whitford and the Ball State men's basketball team. In this episode, we take a look at the Cardinals matchup against Valparaiso, and we also visit the weight room to see the team preparing for their next opponent. Out of the Shadows starts now. schedule so far in the conference and when you're playing a difficult schedule like that and we are who we are we're a young team that you know quite frankly we've had one winning season in the last eight this is all new to us and um, so I'm not I'm not because I don't I'm not judging our season based on wins and losses I don't want them to judge the season based on wins and losses if we play really well that's a good thing sometimes we win those games sometimes we're not if we play Kentucky at Kentucky we can play really well and not win you know, I can't beat, our, beat ourselves up over that. For us, it's about the process. It's about being able to watch our team and say, can we execute our system and our style of playing in a difficult environment? We could play a bad team, win by two, and not play well. I'm not happy with that. You know, I'm, I'm only judging us by ourselves and the things that we need to do to get better. I think that's where all of our focus has to be. Well, the season has been kind of up and down, so uh, as the um, schedule shows, and um, we just uh, we just got to come out and we just got to keep playing hard. So a great test for us, a great example of our growth. Very sharp right there. Team one going out man to man. Come on, go. Be right here. You have to come right in here and look for the ball. Okay, run it. Let's go. Thirty-five eyes. Thirty-five eyes. I think just continue to listen to Coach Whipper's game plan from the game to game and practice well so that translates translate to the game and just continue to compete, you know, whether we're, in, we're down or up. So just play as a team, as a whole, stay together. As you're doing it, you're coming up here, you're smashing to the block. Both coming right back here and you're looking here or there, really, you're your two best, but you can hit anywhere. Point guard, second cuts out, it's the safety. Guys, the freshmen, we're definitely really close. But everybody, everybody's pretty close on the team. The older guys have kind of like accepted us well because they know that we're playing a big role in their senior year. And so everybody's pretty gelled together and it's, it's good team chemistry. Right, one and two at the elbows, four, you're at the nail, five, you're on the ball side block. Ball is right here. I want 35 ice flow into rover. 35. Play how we play, but you got to be alive that this guy can step in. Okay, on any of them. We didn't expect for us to come out, you know, on ties like just full out and just be together. I mean, just be complete. That's because we've always stressed it's about the process. It's about where we be in February, March. So you know, we're just the process right now. We just. Still learning to get, get to know each other at the team, and they said the whole. Step. On this deal, that's right. Arm bar, you're gonna be arm bar, you're gonna be arm bar. Go ahead. 
You know, there's some things that I, that I know I'll get better at as we go forward. You know, the timing of how many plays I'm putting in, in when I'm putting them in, the, uh, the amount of our system that we're, I'm giving to the players at what times. It's a little bit of a learning curve for me for what's the right amount of food for our guys to chew on, so to speak, that allows them to play hard without overthinking and still gives us an, a, enough diversity to play against different styles. And so there's things like that that I watch that, uh, that I feel like with each passing year I'll, I'll learn from the, from the one before and, and uh, continue to get better at. Amazing how much focus affects the game. Both teams off, scout team next. Let's go to the, the one that they run two plays out of the same. Yeah, three point. across, three across. Good. Team four, blocks loop. We just have to play our game, compete, come out, try to play harder and as, as every game, we just try to, we emphasize rebounding and turnovers, and those are the biggest things that we got to do to be able to compete and win. Good, big jump and swipe CB, and again, it's your choice. If you want to show trail and whip it late, you can do that. Come on, bro. Get that. All right, fellas, here's what I want from us tonight. Attack mode. Be in attack mode. Nothing passive about who we are. Play fast. Play with pace. That's, that's when we're at our best. That's when we're having the most fun. That's who we are. That's who we're working to be every day. Be aggressive out there. We're going to learn a lot about ourselves. How competitive are we? So a guy named Sun Tzu wrote this book called The Art of War. He said the key to winning a battle is to allow an escape for the enemy. He wrote that like the godfather of all war books. He said the key to winning is to give them a way out. Because when things start going bad, they'll take it. He said that the, the, the battle you never want to fight is when there is no way out. That's the one you don't want to fight because they'll fight to death at that point. What I'm trying to teach us is that this isn't war, this is basketball. But it's got to mean more to us. It's got to mean more to us for 40 minutes as a team. How hard are we willing to play and compete for 40 minutes? Let's go get this one. Hey, go, go, go. All in on three. One, two, three. Two, three. All in.
Majuk. He's not starting, but he'll still get his good action. As Majuk gets a dunk for the Ball State Cardinals, we're tied at two, 18 to go in the first half. Majuk, Majuk, the 6'9 Juco transfer. Right side is Peters. Peters, the team's leading scorer, averaging above 15 points a game. Into the post to Musa Gay. Turns over the right shoulder, and he got it. Count a foul as well. Musa Gay is a force to be reckoned with down low, and Majuk's going to have his handfuls all day. A side is Clay Yo driving into the lane. A freshman as he hits right to the front of the rim and he lays it in for Valpo. The freshman Clay Yo. It's Barry for Ball State. One of the team's top scorers, averaging double figures, has the ball stolen away from him. Another run out for Yo as he lays it in for Valpo. Back to back baskets for Yo and Ball State wants to talk things over. Valpo works it off of a high ball screen. Ball State with their zone defense. Out to Coleman. He stops, pops, pulls a jumper, and it's missed short. Peters there to clean it up for the Valparaiso Crusaders, and he's on the board. Off the rebound as Levante Doherty into the front court. Nine point lead for Valpo as they hold out high. Valparaiso out of the horizon link. Ball State in the Mid American Conference. With a runner in the leg, counting by Lexus Williams, a freshman. His first points on the evening. And we got a timeout call for the Ball State Cardinals. 17 to 6, Valparaiso over the Ball State Cardinals. It's not been a good start for Ball State. The ball stolen by Ball State, and it's picked up right back to Turner. Turner wants to attack. That's his style of play, and he's left open. He puts it over the front of the rim. And Ball State with a little run of their own, a 5-0 run by the Ball State Cardinals, and it's back to a six-point game. Majuk, Majuk in foul trouble, so they turn to Mading of Ball State. And Turner grabs the loose ball off the turnover. Long pass from the front court. Barry for the lead. And he puts it right through the net. Ball State on top. The timeout is called by Valpo. Jesse Barry last season hit four three pointers in seven different games. He finds his first one here, and Ball State is on top 20 to 19. Doherty will spot up for three for Valpo, and he drills it right through the net. An 11-point lead for Valpo, and it was four just a minute ago. And we've talked about it. it's a game of runs. Valpo now with the momentum on. Ball State trying to get to a single-point deficit before halftime. Only seven seconds to go on the game clock. Shot clock turned off. It's Turner with three seconds. Driving, shooting, and missing off the side of the iron as we have reached halftime with the Valparaiso Crusaders. An 11-point lead over the Ball State Cardinals, 31-20. to Be strong, got to put your shoulder to them, get to the foul line. But let's make these big guys run 94 feet. If I race you guys against their big guys, you're going to win by a long shot. It's not going to be close. The more advanced passes, the more we can attack and transition, the more we're going to catch them in the wrong spot. That's who we are every day anyway. But we have to have incredible defensive effort. I've seen two guys dive on the floor. I've seen about seven chances to dive on the floor. And I ask that same question. How competitive are you? Are you the guy that's got a way out? If we don't win, it's okay because? Or are you the guy that this is all you got? This is it for me. This is it.
Shot clock down to 10. Peters has to go to work. Down to five on the shot clock. Coleman on the drive, hangs in the lane. And you can count the foul as well with Coleman going to the free throw strike. 17 point lead, Turner in the lane. All stork for three to make it a 14 point game and he does right through the nylon. With Barry, one of the team's best scorers with the basketball, hands off to the team's leading scorer in Turner. Turner on the drive, only five foot seven, but he finds his way to the rim with a circus shot and he lays it in. But in all four of their losses, they've been out rebounded by an average margin of three and a half, and Mading is a or Majuk is a big portion of that as he gets scored on here by Fernandez of Valparaiso. The lead swells 49-31, 51-31. A 20-point lead is the biggest it's been all evening. Adekoya, runner in the lane, off the window. Everything going Valpo's way in this one. Six to play in the game. Chris Bond in the lane. Right back out to Turner. He'll fire a three, and it's partially blocked as he's only 5'7 against Jordan Coleman. That's 6'5. And in transition, Doherty lays it in. Chase Brogna holds for Ball State. Five seconds to go, and Quentin Payne will check up a three. It's off the iron as that summarizes Ball State's day to day as they fall to the Valparaiso Crusaders. It's two things you worry about as a coach what you can control. And then the things, and in a given game, you can't control. You can't control the opponent. They are who they are. We don't control their execution. They do. They're good, and they play the good game. But you can control your effort and your ability on loose balls. That's up to us. Now, I'm going to tell you this. This one right here, that's on me as much as everyone in this room because my team, is not doing this right now. We're far enough into the year that if we run power slice, we got to run it. If we're not doing it, that speaks about you, but it speaks about me. And I'll take that one. I'll take that on me. That's what we can control. How organized we are. It's not a matter of anything other than are we going to take our lessons and learn from it. Because we've gotten handed three lessons in a row. Are we going to learn from it? Look each other in the mirror. No excuses, no explanations. Don't blame the other guy, don't blame anyone else. I'm not gonna do it either. All in three, one, two, three. All, All in. in. You know, after the Valpo game, uh, I, was, I was really disappointed with the hustle plays for us in the game. You know, it, it didn't start off going well for us. We missed some shots early. And, um, and when that happens, you know, the, the, the those are the things I always say you can't control in the game. You can't control a good shooting night or the ball comes around the rim. We didn't finish a couple that I thought we normally would. And, uh, but you can't let the things you can't control affect the things you can control. The things you can control is balls on the floor, loose ball, you gotta dive and get it. Your ability to hustle, communicate, stay organized as a team. The game started to go south on us and we, um, the things that, we, that are important to us as a team to winning got away from us. So that it went from bad to worse in that way. And, uh, so I was disappointed with it, but it's a great learning experience for us. We were able to watch it on film and, and uh, show everything from not only the plays on the court that went bad, but after the ball went out of bounds, how quickly their team huddled, how our team didn't huddle near as quick at a timeout. Their team ran to the bench, our team didn't. The, the team actions that are really important. Uh, we, uh, we didn't get, get uh, to stay together like we need to, and that, that's a real good learning experience for us. For a while there, we lost we lost our like competitiveness, and we just gotta we gotta get it back, and we just gotta compete hard every play, every every second, every game. So it's the biggest thing we've been focusing on in practice. Times like that's when you gotta you know pick your teammates up and be together as a team. So you know stuff like that won't happen. The positives are to learn from them. You know, it's it's not that uh, you know we had a couple bright spots. Mading played well, and and I think there's always something in there that you'll find. But but for the most part, for us, it's uh it's a real humbling experience. And then the, the positives is what we can get out of it is a chance to get better, you know, a chance to look at ourselves in the mirror, be honest with ourselves about what we the areas we didn't perform, and, and take some humble lessons into practice and improve on. Uh, that's what that's what we're trying to do.
the last couple of games we have we've been getting out hustled and you never want that to happen. You want to control what you can control, control so that's what we try to do. Rather than spending 10 days to prepare a market, that would be a waste. We're going to spend about eight days preparing for us for the whole year. And I use this opportunity to get better and then we'll spend a couple days preparing for Marquette and then we'll move on to the next game. For us, strength training is really important and to maintain it in season. And uh, some of our guys are at strength maintenance, some of them are at strength gain based on the individual. Every day I'm getting in, I'm getting in better shape here and there. A lot of it is mental to me now at this point. Yeah, I think everybody getting better, maintaining their weight. You know, we've been, when we get a chance to live, we're going to work hard. Coach Rowe does a great job of getting us. A good lift, again, is our body's right, so that's been going good. He's definitely a good mentor. I look up to him a lot because, I mean, he knows what he's talking about, and he's just, he's always going to push you. If he sees you working, he likes that, and when he sees that, he come, when you come in every day, you just expect him to get on you, and you can't get mad because you know, you know he's going to make you better. I think he's a great guy. I bet he helped me, you know, gain muscle, and get strong, and, and increase my vertical. So I think he does a great job with everybody, just pushing them to that to their limit, and sometimes past that to get better and get stronger. The biggest thing for me in the weight room is not like heavy weight. It's more of just quick reps, like I try to get my reps in as fast as I can. Whatever we're doing, I try to do as fast as I can without taking a break. <laughs> it's a big difference. I'm a lot more explosive. Before I could touch a rim maybe three times without being dead and having dead legs and not being able to go hard in practice. Oh, how you look like you struggling, sir? Like I said, when I first got here, we, we started a practice and after the warm up, five minutes of warm up, I was gassed and about ready to die and pass out. So I'm doing a lot better. I'm making it through practices pretty well now. And it's mental now at this point, so. Again, it sticks with our philosophy of trying to be our best at the end of the year. We lift all season and we're one of the few college teams that will lift the day before a game. We'll have certain guys lift the day of the game because we're always much more consumed with being our best in February than we are with being great on any particular day in December. No matter, no matter who we play, we gotta come out and compete. So. The biggest thing is we just want to get better every every day and we don't want to take any steps back. That way, as we get deeper in the conference and get into the conference tournament, we want to be able to play, play at our best level. So that's what we're going to try to do. You know, the goal for us is to maximize our potential. And for us to set hard number goals doesn't make sense because, there's, again, there's a lot of things we can't control. And I do know we've had moments of really good basketball this year. We've had moments we're playing a very good Indiana State team on the road where I felt like in the second half we really had them on the ropes. We had a very good Butler team here where certainly could have won the game. It came down to the wire in the final possession. We beat a very good Southeast Missouri State team that hasn't lost since they've left here. We've had moments of very good basketball. We have, we're not putting together 40 minutes of good basketball ever. And, um, our goal is to be able to do that and put 40 minutes together by the end of the year in January or February. We're great at our style. Our guys, are we have that team chemistry that we need. We believe in the way we play and we've gotten really good at our execution. And if we do that, we're going to be a really dangerous team. I think we've shown that in those moments we can be good. 
will be a very dangerous team going into the conference tournament. And, you know, where the results lie, they lie. Whether we win the league, whether we're getting a bye in the first round, but we want to go into Cleveland, a team that has a chance to win the whole thing and go to the NCAA tournament.